Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel The Teaching Show. Uh, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and please hit the bell icon for more updates. So in this set of uh, videos, uh, I'm trying to uh, build up a course on process calculations and this video mainly deals with degree of freedom analysis. So till now, whatever problems I had taken, I always made it a point to find out how many unknowns were there and how many equations you can write. So in this particular problem, there were two unknowns m dot t1 and m dot b2 and since there are two components, so I can write two independent uh, component balances. So there are two equations and two unknowns which I can solve to calculate these unknowns. Okay, let's take another um, example, problem two. Uh, here also, how many unknowns I have? N2 dot, N3 dot, Y and N1 dot. So there are four unknowns. There are three components O2, N2 and H2O. So I can write three independent balances and one uh, more uh, relation I have uh, which is the uh, density relation okay so I can use these four equations to calculate or to find out these four unknowns so similar was the case here I had three unknowns m dot c m dot e and m dot r and I have three uh, components so three independent balances on water acetic acid and hexanol so I could solve this problem Similar was the case in problem 4. I had 3 components and 3 independent balances. So if you have not seen my previous videos, you can just pause this video on each slide and make it sure that okay, always I had done, I have counted the number of um, unknowns which I have and I have counted number of equations which I can write and then if it matches, then I solve that problem okay similar was the case with the batch mixer the unknowns are m3 and x3 and there are two components so two independent balances i can solve this problem in tray dryer again there were two components so two independent balances and two unknowns m1 and m2 same was the case with the mixing unit okay and with uh, this problem as well Okay, so I always identified how many independent balances were there. So in this problem, there were three independent balances, three unknowns. I could solve this problem. Okay, so by now you must have got an idea that why am I counting the number of unknowns and number of equations. Okay, so first let's recap. In order to solve any problem, I told you first of all select a basis. Then you draw a fully labeled flowchart. And mark all the knowns and unknowns variables in that flowchart. Now next step is then to count the number of unknown variables. Once you have calculated the number of unknown variables then you go ahead and write down all the independent equations and count them. So how many in, in a number of equations which you can write let's call that n equations and the number of unknowns let's call it as n unknowns. Now next step is to perform degree of freedom analysis. It is nothing but what you do is degree of freedom is calculated as number of unknowns minus number of equations. So uh, there are three possibilities. Either you can have a degree of freedom which is equal to zero or it can be either greater than zero or less than zero. So let's see what each of them means. So till now whatever problems we had seen, we saw that we were always trying to match the number of unknowns with number of equations. If they were equal, we could easily solve the problem. Okay. So when degree of freedom is equal to zero, that means the number of unknowns minus number of equations, it is equal to zero. Then your problem is completely specified. You can solve that problem. Okay. And when you solve that problem, you get a unique solution. So this is the desired condition. Now what happens if you have a degree of freedom which is greater than zero? That means number of unknowns are more than number of equations. In that case, your problem is underspecified. You cannot solve the problem and if you solve it, you will have infinitely many solutions. Usually, this is the case we have for optimization problems. In that case, you have degree of freedom which is greater than zero and whatever the degree of freedom is, okay that many number of unknowns you can arbitrarily fix in order to optimize a problem so this optimization problem it is not being dealt with in this uh, course on material and energy balance so uh, we are not interested in 
degree of freedom which is greater than zero okay now there is a third case in which you can have a degree of freedom which is less than zero that means the number of unknowns is less than number of equations we say that such type of problems are over specified don't solve this problem because depending on the equations which you are using you will get different solutions and these solutions will be inconsistent with each other okay so there is a redundancy in the problem and you will get inconsistent solutions so don't solve that problem so in material and energy balance what we do is we always do a degree of freedom analysis if your degree of freedom is other than zero then we don't solve those problems we just say that the problem is either under specified or over specified and it does not have a unique solution we only solve problems which have degree of freedom equal to zero that is your desired condition okay now uh, it's very easy to write down or count the number of unknowns but it's very difficult sometimes it may happen that you may forget some of the equations okay so let's write down the types of equations you can write okay first of all what we have seen is you can write material balances so as many components you have you can write that many independent material balance equations then you can also write energy balance equations uh, that we will see later on in the course okay then third is process specification like we had seen previous uh, problems, you can go and check my earlier videos. In that, uh, sometimes I specify that a stream B is one fifth of stream A or something like that. So those are process specifications. Then you can write physical properties. What are physical properties? Like density relations. Okay. Then you have equation of state. Most of the time when I am dealing with the ideal gas, then at that time what I say that the um, I am going to use um, ideal gas equation. So ideal gas equation is equation of state. Then you have equilibrium relations. Suppose that you have two phases which are in equilibrium. Then I can write equilibrium relations that we will see again in a later course. Okay. And later videos uh, when we come across such problems. Okay. Other than that, what you can write is physical constraints. Physical constraints, how do they come up? Say for example, I am uh, constantly writing that uh, some of the mole fractions or mass fractions comes out to be equal to 1. So those are physical constraints. Okay. Then you can also have stoichiometric relations. Uh, these uh, relations or these type of equations, they become important when you are dealing with material balance involving chemical reactions. So uh, in later videos, I will be talking about how to write such relations. So these are some of the type of equations you can write and you can check whether you have missed any one of them or not. Okay. So you have to be very careful while finding out how many equations you have. Okay. Now, let's take a problem and understand uh, degree of freedom analysis in a better way. So, the problem statement reads like this. A stream of humid air, it enters a condenser in which 95% of the water vapor is condensed. The flow rate of the condensate is found to be 225 liters per hour. There is a moist air which is entering, but it is saying that the dry air component of that moist air, it contains 21 mole percent oxygen and 79% nitrogen and it, this problem it doesn't talk about how much amount of water is going in along with this dry air okay now it has been asked calculate the flow rate of the gas stream leaving the condenser and the mole fractions of oxygen nitrogen and water in the stream so let's start uh, with uh, whatever we have decided till now so my first step is select a basis I have been given a basis that is 225 liters per hour of condensate. So I'm going to choose this as my basis. Next, I will draw a fully labeled flowchart and mark all the knowns and unknowns on that flowchart. So let's see. I have made a flowchart. Okay. And uh, what I'm doing over here is that uh, I have marked my unknowns. N1 dot, that is the amount of dry air which is going in, is unknown. N2 dot, that is the amount of water which is going in along with dry air. I don't know how much it is. So that's why I am labeling it as a different stream. Then I don't know how much uh, oxygen, nitrogen and water is coming out with the air. Okay. And then N.6, I don't know the molar flow rate of the condensate. But I do know the volumetric flow rate. Okay. So now, first of all, what I will do is I will count 
count number of unknowns how many unknowns i have n1 dot n2 dot n3 n4 n5 and n6 so i have six unknowns then i will do is independent equations how many independent equations i have i have three material balance equations uh, balance on o2 n2 and h2o then i have one process specification because the problem statement reads that 95 percent of the water which is coming in gets condensed so i have n dot 6 which is equal to 95 percent of n dot 2 so this is my process specification then there is one density relation i can easily assume that the water which is condensed it has a density of 1 kg per liter okay so i have one density relation in all i have five equations now what is step four now i will calculate my degree of freedom so number of unknowns minus number of independent equations that gives me my degree of freedom as one so the problem is under specified now i need more information because degree of freedom is not equal to one so exactly one more equation i need okay so let's say i specify one more uh, specific i give one more process specification that is the air which is entering contains 10 mole percent water okay now i know that water is how much it is 10 percent of n1 dot now what i have done is that because i know the ratio of oxygen and nitrogen in dry air so now i have converted this into mole fraction because 90 percent of it is dry air whatever the stream which is coming in out of this 21 percent of this 90 percent is oxygen and 79 percent of this 90 percent is nitrogen so i have calculated my mole fractions okay now let's do how many unknowns we have so uh, i am now starting my degree of freedom analysis how many unknowns i have n1 dot n3 dot n4 dot n5 dot n6 dot so five unknowns how many equations i have three material balance one process specification 95 percent of the water which is coming gets condensed and one density relation so i have five equations and my degree of freedom is now zero okay so now this problem is solvable and i can easily solve it so now my fifth step is i have to write down all the equations and determine in which sequence i will solve them so my density relation is what density multiplied by volumetric flow rate that gives me mass flow rate if i divide it with the molecular weight of water it gives me molar flow rate okay so i can calculate the molar flow rate of the condensate that that is calculated using my density relation my process specification is over here so if i calculate n dot 6 from this relation i can easily use this process specification and calculate now n dot 1 after that i am writing water balance oxygen balance nitrogen balance all of these are in n dot 6 and n dot 1 so i can calculate the remaining variables so this is the scheme which we are going to follow first we will calculate n dot 6 and it comes out to be 12.5 kilomoles per hour then i put this in my process specification and i calculate n dot 1 which comes out to be 131.58 kilomoles per hour then i use n1 dot and n dot 6 value to calculate n dot 5 okay that is the amount of water vapor which is coming in the gaseous stream that is equal to 0 0.658 kilomoles per hour similarly i find out the amount of oxygen and nitrogen which are coming out okay so now in the problem statement it has been asked what is the flow rate of gas stream which is leaving the condenser so whatever what is the um, gas stream it is composed of your n3 dot n4 dot and n5 dot so i add them all up and i get the total flow rate of the gas which is leaving is equal to 119.08 kilomoles per hour now mole fraction it's very easy just take the moles divided by the total number of moles and then i get the mole fractions of oxygen nitrogen and water respectively okay so this is a very simple problem and uh, you can easily find out whether this problem is solvable or not by performing a degree of freedom analysis usually this analysis becomes very important when you are um, dealing with a process which has more than one process units in that case from where to start the calculation you have to first do degree of freedom analysis wherever the degree of freedom is zero then you start your calculation from there so that will be the topic of my next video and uh, thanks for watching and please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel Thanks a lot.